It can be daunting to propagate a code change to thousands or tens of thousands of source files and repositories. Worthwhile improvements can even end up quietly abandoned rather than deal with the tedium and disruption of propagating change. With Modern, the challenges of affecting change at great scale can be surmounted. Let's learn how by looking at the anatomy of a Java refactoring recipe, and then we'll create one from scratch. For this demonstration, I'll be using the Rewrite Recipe Starter project available open source on GitHub under the Modern Inc. organization. This provides a template recipe module with everything you need to get started with custom recipe development. To learn the anatomy of how a recipe works, we're going to take a look at the components of the No Guava Lists New Array List recipe, which is included inside of the Rewrite Recipe Starter module. I find the best way to get to know any piece of code for the first time is often not to look at the code itself, but to start with its tests. Here inside the test file for this recipe, we see that the recipe is configured for use. Inside the defaults method overridden from the rewrite test interface, which defines the defaults for all of the other test methods in the class. So if these defaults are not overridden, they are assumed to apply to every single method. Let's take a look at one of these test methods to understand the intent of this recipe. The rewrite run method provided by the rewrite test interface is the way that unit tests invoke open rewrite in order to execute a recipe and make assertions about the result of its refactoring or search operations. This invocation of the Java method provides a before text, which is the source code that the recipe will be operating on, and after text, which is the result the recipe is expected to produce at the end of its execution. If this recipe does not produce the desired result by running, the test will fail. So looking here, we can see that the intent of this recipe or the behavior of this recipe is to replace the guava lists.new array list method with the standard array list constructor and uh, rearrange the imports accordingly. Looking at other methods in the class, we see that they cover testing other variations on lists new array lists. Different combinations of arguments passed to that function results in different combination of arguments forwarded to the constructor of new array list. So let's look at the recipe now and see how it accomplishes this. For convenience and by convention, we like to use Lombok annotations on our recipe classes, although this is not required. All recipes should be immutable and stateless. The Lombok value annotation in particular is useful for enforcing this best practice. We see that the no guava list new array list class starts off by extending the org.openrewrite.recipe class. The display name and description fields can include markdown, and you can use a comment like this, language equals markdown, in order to give a hint to your IDE to format these fields accordingly. But the most important part of a recipe tends to be its visitor. Overriding the get visitor method allows us to return a visitor, which will pass through all of the source files in the project and make the appropriate changes in order to affect our search or refactoring operation. The visitor pattern is a common and powerful software design pattern, which abstracts away the traversal of complex data structures, allowing them to be interpreted and manipulated as a stream of events. In this case, the type of event we're interested in is method invocations, as we are going to be replacing the invocation of the guava methods with constructor invocations on array list. So this visitor overrides visit method invocation in order to affect that transformation. By the nature of open rewrite in the visitor pattern, this visit method invocation call is going to see every single method invocation in the project. And no matter how extensive your use of Guava is, 99.9% .9 of those methods are not going to be the ones we're looking for, which hints towards one of the most fundamental things about authoring a transformation recipe is avoiding making changes to things that are not the thing you are intending to change. The vast majority of methods in a project are not going to be the methods we are interested in transforming. 
So recipes should be programmed defensively to avoid making any changes except those they are absolutely certain of. The first principle of recipe development is do no harm. In this context, that is achieved by using method matchers in order to narrow the focus of this recipe to only those method invocations that have the signature we're looking for. We see that three different method matchers are used to match three different variations on the method we are looking to transform. If we look at the definition of these method matchers, we see their construction. The first part of a method matcher signature is the fully qualified name of the receiver type. That is to say, the class that we are calling a method on. The second part is the name of the method being matched and its arguments. So we see here these three versions match new array list accepting no arguments, new array list accepting an iterable, and new array list accepting an int. Once one of the three versions of the methods being matched has been found, the relevant imports are manipulated, potentially removing the old import and potentially adding the new import. And one of three Java template invocations is used to actually affect the code change. Note that maybe remove import and maybe add import are intelligent utilities. Maybe remove import will not remove an import unless there are no references to the type found in the source file. For example, if this recipe were to remove these invocations of list.newArrayList, but other methods were still called on the Guava lists class, the import would not be removed as references to it could still be found within the source file. Similarly, maybe add import won't actually add an import for ArrayList unless references to ArrayList can be found within the source file. In this way, import manipulation avoids making spurious changes and helps you to produce high quality code exactly as you intend it to be. So let's dig into this first code path where we're handling the no argument form of new array list. You know, as we see this matcher is matching new array list accepting no arguments, and it's using this Java template in order to do that. So let's take a look at the Java template and see how it works. As Java programmers, we are used to thinking of code in terms of its textual representation. And thinking in terms of its lossless semantic tree representation can be challenging. To reduce the burden on programmers of having to think about their code through this alternate representation, the Java template class provides a mechanism by which code snippets can be transformed into fully hydrated, fully fleshed out LST elements with type attribution. So we see this Java template builder provides a code snippet, our new array list indication, and crucially enumerates the imports that must be used in order for the parser to make sense of the snippet that is provided. Under the hood, how this works is that a valid Java source file will be constructed around this new array list snippet that will be parsed by our Java parser and the resulting lossless semantic tree will have the element we're interested in, just that new array list invocation extracted out and made available. So to be able to generate that valid snippet, all the imports used within the snippet must be enumerated here. And that's exactly what we see happening. Now, so that's everything you need to understand this first form of the new array list replacement, which does not accept any arguments. But if we could only replace new array list invocations that did not accept any arguments, this wouldn't be very useful as a recipe or its utility would be limited. So let's take a look at one of the forms that accepts an argument. This new array list iterable code branch is going to be looking at invocations of new array list that accept an iterable. Inside of the Java template on this code path, we see an interpolation marker used in the snippet. This signifies that an LST element of type javautil.collection will be passed in here during the application of this Java template. And down here where that Java template is used, in the argument list to javatemplate.apply, 
we see that the final arguments that are passed in are the parameters to any template substitutions. So in this case, the first entry in the method's argument list is going to be substituted in to the provided snippet. And if we go and look at the associated test, that's exactly what we see happens in this case. This iterable L, in this case another list, is preserved and still passed into the array list constructor coming out on the other side of this recipe. And indeed, we can run this test and see that it passes. This recipe uses our preconditions class as a performance optimization. Whenever a visitor is applied to a source file, it does a complete traversal of the source file in order to affect its change. This costs time and compute. And if there is a shortcut, a quick test you can use to say for certain that the recipe is not applicable, would not make any changes to this file, then that traversal would be a waste. To avoid wasting time and compute, traversing files where no changes will be made, the preconditions mechanism can be used. In this case, we use three of the uses method recipe board together based on the same three method matchers we use inside the recipe to quickly check whether this recipe would be likely to make changes. So the Java visitor we were returning here would not be invoked on any source file that did not use at least one of the three methods that it knows to change. To learn more, check out our documentation.